one year ago, we bought a house. And this year, to celebrate, the kids wanted to recreate that house out of gingerbread. Here it is, the house we have lived in for a year. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on here at the front of the house. First of all, we're going to have to make, of course, the two roof pieces and the front of the house. Uh, the upper window is actually a bay window, so it's going to require three window pieces to create this uh, bay that comes out. Then the roof of the porch, and then the porch itself, requiring a top, a front, and the two sides. This is the side of the house, the first side of the house. You can see there's another one of these bay windows. So I'm going to need these three pieces that come out as well as a roof to the bay. Finally, up here, and this is going to be hard to see, is a gable window. You can see the gable up there. But it's interesting because the window is actually half in the wall and half in the gable. It's quite unusual actually. The back of the house is where some of the more interesting stuff is happening. Because as you can see, we have a greenhouse. You're also hearing our pond in the background, but I'm not going to build that. We've got the greenhouse and then a couple of windows and a bigger sliding glass door. This is going to mean a lot of window building. After looking at the house in detail, I started drawing pattern pieces. As you can see, they really piled up. I had another problem though. Now the tricky part about this particular gingerbread house is the number of windows that are going to be there. Uh, this means that I have to cut the gaps out of the raw dough in order to be able to put the window glass in and once you've got a hole in your gingerbread piece it's really difficult to move so we're, I'm going to have to be fairly careful about where and how I cut out the windows. Let's get to it! Now I have a lot of experience rolling out cookie dough. I've made lots of gingerbread houses, I've made lots of pie crusts, I make sugar cookies, I make them with my kids, I've taught other people how to do it, and yet I made the classic mistake. This was a hot, hot day, and I started on the counter. As you can see, things don't always go to plan. It was so bad, in fact, that despite the fact that I had just taken this dough out of the fridge, I ended up just balling it up and starting over. I should have put it back in the fridge and left it for another half an hour. But uh, as you'll see from the next couple of clips, I powered through. Does anybody else find that their favorite part of cutting out cookie dough is picking up all the excess from around the pieces you've cut? It's just so satisfying. Recreating my house of gingerbread is requiring me to do something I have never done before. Make windows. Well, 
that's sort of not true. I have absolutely put windows in a gingerbread house before. Usually what I do is I get lollipops or other small candies, break them up, put them in the holes, and melt them in the oven, and they spread, make beautiful colored stained glass style windows. And it's great, it's wonderful, they taste great, easy, it's fun, colorful, but since I'm recreating my house as realistically as possible, I need clear windows. You can see behind me, my windows aren't colorful. So this means that I am having to make my own windows out of sugar, and I've never done that before. Wish me luck. Here I have all the pieces that require windows laid out on some foil. I have my pot with some sugar, my candy thermometer, and pasty brush. So let's get started. The first thing I did was add some water to my sugar and then stir it up gently. Uh, you can't really stir sugar once it starts boiling, otherwise it starts to crystallize but you stir it at the beginning. Then I put my candy thermometer in and waited for it to start to boil. As it started boiling, um, I took my pastry brush and just gently wiped any crystals that had splashed up onto the side of the pot back down into the mixture so that it wouldn't crystallize the whole pot. Uh, this takes a while. This took maybe 45 minutes all told. Here you can see I've stalled out at 100 degrees where the water is boiling off. Of course, since this takes a while, I had my very important cup of tea to hand so that I had something to do while I stood and watched my thermometer. After being stuck at around 100 for quite a while, the thermometer started to climb again and we are getting closer to the hard crack stage. Very exciting! Once the thermometer hit hard crack, I very carefully spooned it into the holes where the windows go. Uh, you can see this isn't perfect, I do have some drips, uh, and it's also slightly yellowish instead of completely clear. Oh well, these are cookies after all. As usual, assembly always starts with making a batch of royal icing. Uh, whip together some meringue powder and some icing sugar for seven minutes, and then look at this lovely stiff peak. Well, I've got my icing made, and now I'm going to put together the house. Because it is a celebration of one year anniversary in this house, I have some wee helpers with me. So my wee helper and I started by laying out the pieces where we were going to want them on our board. And then the wee helper held the pieces while I piped the icing on. Having a wee helper can be a lot easier than using various glasses and jars to hold your pieces up while you get your four walls up to be self-stable, uh, though uh, we helpers aren't always very reliable and sometimes wander off at the key point, this of course did not happen here. Once we had the main four walls of the house up, um, I turned around to the back and we put on the greenhouse pieces. These were even easier than the main walls because of course they had the main walls to lean against. The next task that we tackled was creating the bay window on the side of the house. These bay windows proved to be very tricky. Uh, and this was even more so when my wee helper decided that she wanted to do the icing piping uh, instead of me. As you can see, some of the piping on this house, and you'll see it when it's all finished, is a little lumpier than it might have been otherwise, but you know what? We all live in this house, so everybody got to contribute to building it if they wanted. 
We then came to the front of the house and started building the porch. Um, the pieces for the porch didn't fit together as well as I might have otherwise wanted. This long piece in particular ended up being significantly longer than it was supposed to be. Um, whatever, it's a cookie. Then using some pretzels, we created the roof of the porch. This always looks a little trickier than it's going to be, but because of the support from the pretzel sticks, it's, it's actually not so bad. Um, in this case, one of the pretzel sticks turned out to be a little bit wonky, but it wasn't too, too bad. The next thing I did was try to put the bay window for the front of the house that I had glued together already onto the front of the house. Um, as you can see, this sort of worked. Uh, it stayed, but it didn't stay very straight, unfortunately. By this time, the structure was stable enough that I decided to tackle some of the roof pieces. First, I started with the greenhouse roof, which was very straightforward since the angle was not so acute that it just stayed. And then I did the main roof pieces. Now, putting on roofs to gingerbread houses is always the same. You can't rush it. You have to put the, the icing on and then you have to hold it. And then as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm going around and filling the gaps because gingerbread is, as I've said a couple of times in this video, a cookie. And they're not straight and flat. So you can kind of fill in the gaps with icing to make sure that it glues well together. And then, well, and then you just have to wait. There is really nothing you can do to speed up the process of having a gingerbread roof dry. Here I am putting the roof of the bay window on. These proved to be a little bit tricky, but I was quite proud with how they turned out at the end. They looked quite good. The next thing that I tackled was trying to put the window for the gable window in. And unfortunately, the piece didn't quite fit uh, into the gap that I had left in the roof. This just has to do with the shifting and changing in the oven. But uh, the tip that I have is to use a grater and you can grate the side of your pieces just to flatten it out, uh, flatten out any bumps and reduce the size so that it will fit into the gap that you have. Once I had the window attached to the roof, I then put on the two gable roof pieces. Now I made a silly mistake when I put these on the first time and I put icing on the on sides that didn't need icing. And so when I put the gable roof onto the window, uh, it stuck to my fingers and it all fell off and it was a big old sticky mess. No, no worries. I just wiped the icing off and <laughs> stuck it back on. That's the nice thing about it. Go on. The bedroom. All right, Rick River. Might need to take a hammer to my bedroom. Yeah. Do you need a, a knife maybe to get into your bedroom? Yeah, I need a knife. <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> what are you part. gonna? The greenhouse? I don't know. So I, I take the greenhouse. But I don't actually want to eat it. Take the rope. <laughs> All right. You're gonna get in, Get your get your bedroom out. Maybe maybe Daddy can help you. Okay. Have a good stab towards it. 
Nice. All right, get in there. My bedroom is yummy. There you go. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> what are you gonna take? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Ceiling's falling off. I think you'll agree that that was not a perfect recreation of our house. We missed out on a couple of things. The icing was not perfect, but you know what? It was the perfect celebration of our wonderful house that we have enjoyed for a year and intend on enjoying for many more. It was really, really fun. See you next time.